Uh, one of the things that has come up recently, uh, one of my friends posted this on Facebook, and we had a good conversation about it because he didn't know, um, is the, the idea of the uh, words, uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And I have no doubt in my mind that there are many people who will say this phrase who really have no ill will and intent, no ill intent for the Jewish people. And they mean it in a peaceful way. They mean it just because they want the Palestinians and Jews to be able to live in the area in peace and harmony. They, they don't want to have like segregated stuff. They just want one. They, they want, I guess, a one state solution. I don't know how the tenable that is, but they, they don't want to simply like just wipe out the people in the area. Um, they have good intentions with it. But in reality, there are strong anti-Semitic undertones with that statement. And that's the point why I'm discussing this here is that uh, it's not always the case and that why people should avoid using from the river to the sea uh, because there are strong anti-Semitic undertones. And if you have to go kind of back in history too. Uh, Jews have a history of always being the minority wherever they are. And not just the minority, but different. And as such, because we're the minority and because we're different, uh, we make a very easy scapegoat. The Black Plague, for example. Some sources that I see now saying that this whole idea might not be true, so you might need to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but it used to be said that because that Jewish people were blamed uh, for the Black Plague because they were not dying from it as much as other people. Uh, but in reality, so there you must be the cause of the plague since you're not dying of it. In reality... Uh, it was said that Jewish rituals of cleanliness based on, you know, washing of hands and how they deal with the dead and requiring the burial of the dead, you know, immediately instead of waiting had to do uh, with the spread of disease and why it was less in Jewish communities. But because people confuse causation and correlation, uh, they would say, oh, well, they're not clearly they're the cause, clearly they're the problem. Let's drive the Jews out. Or worse. So Jews are often dri driven out. Or worse. The pogroms in Russia. The Holocaust for the biggest example of them all. Hell, you know, blaming the Jews is a tale as old as time. I was once uh, watching something in high school by Louis Farrakhan. It was a video. And I had heard horrible things about Louis Farrakhan. And even in high school, I was not the type of person to just listen to what other people say and just believe it at face value. I wanted to know why he was such a bad guy, why everybody villainized this this guy. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I watched it was a whole hour and I'm watching him for the first 55 minutes. And all I hear him talking about is how uh People in the black community need to uplift themselves. How they need to work together, uh, because and, you know we need to we need to look towards the future and, and all of these things that he was was saying was 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 uplifting and empowering and powerful. And I couldn't find anything wrong with what he was saying. What so I'm like, what's wrong? Why, why do people hate this guy so much? I I, I couldn't understand why. And, all, and then in the last five minutes, he's like, and it's all the fault of the Jews. And I'm like, well, there you go. You got everybody all riled up and excited. Now you have a plan of action. Blame the Jews. And that's how it often goes. What else happened in the history of, of Judaism? In, in the 1940s, uh, you had a lot of successful Jewish people living in the Middle East in various Arab countries outside of what was known as either the Palestinian Mandate or Transjordan or whatever. Uh, but once the state of Israel was created, uh, those other Arab countries seized the assets of those Jews, and those Jews only had one safe place to go, Israel. Uh, the creation of Israel was a global compromise. Uh, basically, what do we do with these people that nobody else wants? Because even the United States with the Statue of Liberty beckoning for the wretched refuse, was like, nope, too wretched for us. We, we're going to turn them away. 
So the world plopped the Jews down in the middle of an area with other people that they didn't like as well. And they probably said to themselves, hey, let's put these two groups together and they could spend the rest of their time fighting over this little parcel of land and then we can make them hate each other. So whenever we have another problem, we can just rile up the hornet's nest again and, and make them fight so now we can, hey, to pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And since the creation of Israel, the Arab nations have tried repeatedly to wipe Israel off the map. Each time it was an attempt to at genocide. And then they gave up on country on country war and they went on to funding terrorist groups to go that route. And one of these groups, Hamas, was, was literally founded with the goal of eliminating Israel and throwing all the Jews into the sea. And there are people in Hamas who have used the from the river to the sea line, Palestinians will be free. So with the history of global genocide, like how people have wanted to rid their area of the Jews for millennia, for people wanting to clear Jews out of their cities, out of their countries, for attacking the Jews, whatever. We've always had to deal with that. And so when we hear from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, what we hear is we'll be free of the Jews, especially when those statements are being said and repeated by people either in Hamas or people who are even supporting the actions of Hamas. So does that, so, but as I said in the beginning of the, of the video, there are people who may very well not know the history of other people who have used this term in a negative way. And that's why I don't immediately go yelling at people who say it. A friend of mine who posted that statement on Facebook, I was like, look, I know you and I trust you to be a good person, but let me explain this to you why this is not a good phrase to say. And he thanked me for, for explaining it to him. Uh, and then somebody else who I know came and said, look, I, I've never heard this either. And I appreciate you coming and explaining it to us in a way that it was not argumentative, that was not accusational, that was not attacking. And, and even if she had said the same thing, I would have the same thing. Because again, I know that she is a very caring person, somebody who would never want to say anything that was meant as genocidal to the Jews. But make no mistake, when Jewish people hear from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, we hear a clear implied will be free of the Jews. It, we hear a clear, we, we, you can ask the people who say it, well, then what happens to Israel? What happens to the Jews in that case? Ask the people who say that what that what would happen then to get an understanding of what their intent is with what why they're saying those words and then ask them well explain to them why or maybe point them to this video because this is going to be in its own separate video why Jewish people view this word as being anti-Semitic as being one that promotes the genocide of Jews from the area. It promotes ethnic cleansing of the Jews from the area. Can I make a good analysis? I don't know if this is the best one, but many people, you, if, if somebody say that they were swindled out of money or something, sometimes they'll use the word gypped, that they were gypped. But a lot of people don't realize the fact that it's a slur and to, to, Roman, to Romani folks and that you shouldn't be using that term. So I don't, I don't immediately attack people saying, but I want to, ex I will explain to them why it's not good to use those terms. But again, just because you have good, you don't have ill intent, it doesn't mean you should continue using the word. And that's why you should stop saying that word. That's why you should stop using the words from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free because you are basically saying words that have been used to justify the genocide of Jewish people in that area. We can find better ways to support the Palestinian people and find ways for them to be free and ha them to have self-governance without using terms that promote genocide of Jewish people in the area.